Hello! Today I'm going to show you how you can actually use vector files on the web. And uh, the biggest difference between vector and raster files is that a vector file can be scaled up to any size without losing quality. Whereas a raster file is composed of all these little pixels, so as you scale it up in size, the pixels that it's made up of become bigger and bigger, so you know we've all seen pixelated images. That's what happens when you scale up a uh, small file that is a raster file. Whereas vector files, the file is actually like a ton of mathematical equations and stuff that tell a program how that math renders into a shape. So instead of being pixel data, it's actually like math of how the curves work and how the colors work and that sort of thing. And so there are what are called SVG files, which you can actually use on the web as scalable vector graphics, SVG. And you can create these in a program like Illustrator, and you can't really create them in that many other programs, but if you have a vector logo in Illustrator, you can save it as an SVG and use it on your own website. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. It's very easy and it's very supported. It won't work in Internet Explorer 7 and earlier, uh, so if you have a lot of clients that aren't quite up to date yet with Internet Explorer updating, then SVG might not be the way to go. Um, but otherwise, it's great. And what's so cool about these vector graphics is that they're very small file size. So if you're having like a huge image in the background or like a big image in the page, you're going to save a lot of load time for your visitors because they're not loading this huge, huge vector, or sorry, raster image. So here in Illustrator, I've got this um, police badge with a cool swatch gradient -y, swirly thing on it. Uh, and I did this just because it's a little more complex, so it'll give you an example of what a more complex kind of shape looks like. And I'm going to save that as an SVG. I already have it saved as just an Illustrator file. So if I go to File, and then Save As, I can choose Type and choose SVG. And again, it's just on my desktop. So for fonts, um, I would say convert it to Outline so that it's not actually in there as text. And uh, this is a good thing to do because then it's not loading as much. However, we see in our little uh, descriptor down there that small outline text might not be accurately preserved. So let's look at some of the other stuff we can do. Uh, it looks like SVG is the standard, but it says that small text is also an issue. Whereas the Adobe CCF is apparently the most best looking way to do fonts, but it's not very supported. So for me, I'm going to convert it to an outline. And for the image location, basically if you are embedding the image as an actual image, you'll choose embed, um, or you can do it as a link. And uh, I personally, I mean like it's kind of, it goes back and forth, but I kind of like linking uh, because it's a little bit smaller. And you'll just have to mess with it. That's the thing about um, SVG files and stuff is that a lot of the time you just have to try it and see what you like. So if I click link and then click OK and I go to my desktop, um, I see right here there's this SVG document. And one thing I want you to note right off the bat is it's 166 kilobytes. If I were to uh, take this from Illustrator, copy it into like a new Photoshop file, you see I was looking for generic logos. And let's say that I made it large, like even as big as a thousand pixels. Oops. And I saved it as, I don't know, a JPEG, which is a pretty compressed size to the desktop. And let's say I had it at eight as the quality. We see that that's 170 kilobytes versus 166. So anything larger than this is going to be much larger for this file, for the JPEG, whereas with the SVG, it doesn't matter how big it gets. So you can maintain a very small file size for a very, very large file. And in terms of how it works, let's say I go into Dreamweaver. I have this one I was using earlier for another video. Uh, this one's saved on the desktop. And so it works just like any other image. You can just do image source equals, and let me see what I called it. I just called it logo.svg. So logo.svg, since they're both on the desktop. 
and then close that tag and it has it here all dinky you have it actually preview in browser before you can see it um, let's do it at let's say 500 by 500 so width equals 500 height is 500 so if I save this and I preview it in the browser look at that we've got our vector image how hard was that not very hard and what's so cool, let's say I had some weird need to make it 5,000 by 5,000 or something like that. We can see that it's still pixel perfect detail on all of these shapes, which is just so freaking cool, in my opinion, that you can have all this. So it'd be great for website background textures. And um, it's just, it's really nice because let's say you're reusing your logo five different times on your site in multiple different sizes. Well, if you have five separate JPEGs that people are loading, they're going to have to load five separate files. Whereas if you have one SVG file that you simply display at different sizes, the user is only ever loading one file. And so when their browser caches that file, it means that their load time is going to be decreased because they don't have to load that image again. So um, there's a quick little rundown of SVGs. Again, they're very cool. You have to have something like Illustrator to do it, unfortunately because otherwise you don't have the vector file to begin with. So uh, best of luck. If you have questions, of course, get in touch as always. Thanks.